Hey guys, this is James Stephen, the editor of Truffle Report. Thanks for tuning in to our first History of Psychedelics short. We're here because when most people think of psychedelics, they still think of this. Or this. Or maybe just this. And there is a lot of that, and that's okay. But to show you just how much more there is out there, we're getting our journey started with a look at one of the first modern exposures to psychedelic use. See that woman there leading the ceremony? She's a curandero or healer named Maria Sabina. We're in the village of Walta de Jimenez in the Mexican state of Oaxaca in 1955. Her grandfather and great-grandfather were both coranderos too, and passed on what they knew so she could continue the family tradition of spiritual healing using a psilocybin mushroom ritual called the velada. She's also about to have her life ruined. Sorry. It isn't her fault, it's this guy's. This is Robert Gordon Wasson. He was a banker, author, and amateur mycologist. For a long time, he got the credit for discovering psilocybin mushrooms. While it's unlikely that he was, as he claimed, the first white man to consume psilocybin, he was the first to record the experience for publication, and he did coin the phrase magic mushrooms. But I guess we'd better back up. Wasson had been interested in mushrooms ever since he and his Russian wife Valentina had been on their honeymoon in the Catskills almost 30 years earlier. It was there, after marrying a woman from another country, that he made the shocking discovery that not all cultures are alike. His wife liked to pick and cook wild mushrooms, whereas he'd always been taught to be afraid of them. This simple realization that there existed what the two would later call mycophile and mycophobe cultures turned into a new research hobby for the Wassons that would last for years. It doesn't sound like my ideal honeymoon either. Fast forward to 1955 and our Gordon Wasson's been hearing stories of mushroom rituals in Oaxaca, and even made several trips to Mexico to try and see them for himself. He and his photographer Alan Richardson found the village and conned Maria Sabina into sharing the mushroom ritual with them. Wasson told her, A, that he wanted to undergo the ritual because he was worried about his missing son, and B, that neither she nor the village would be named. Both of these were lies. Wasson did initially write about Maria Sabina under the alias Eva Mendez and allow the village to remain unnamed, but the anonymity didn't last. Wasson and Richardson ate the mushrooms and proceeded to have their minds blown. Wasson reported strange and wonderful visions of art motifs that dissolved the little house, then of traveling over mountains and rivers. All with the sensation of feeling hours pass in the span of only seconds. Obviously he didn't plan on keeping all of this to himself. Wasson sold the story to Life, one of the most popular monthly magazines in America. The reading public first encountered magic mushrooms nestled between ads for motorboats and makeup in June of 1957. The innocence of it all didn't last long either. Maria Sabina and the town of Walta de Jimenez soon found themselves at the center of the world's first shroom boom. First, Wasson kept coming back with bigger teams that included French mycologist Roger Heim, who cataloged seven different species of psilocybe mushrooms in the area, and LSD inventor Albert Hoffman, who presented Sabina with his synthetic version of psilocybin. It might have been fine if things stopped there, but news of where the magic mushrooms came from leaked out. Maria Sabina's alias of Eva Mendez was blown, and the town became a destination for drug seekers and hippies. Maria Sabina, true to her beliefs, did her best to welcome them all. While there's no proof, she's rumored to have been visited by the likes of Aldous Huxley, Alejandro Jodorowsky, Bob Dylan, Carlos Castaneda, John Lennon, and Walt Disney, to name just a few. Fame didn't turn out well for Maria Sabina, or for her hometown. Mexican federal authorities raided her, thinking she was a drug trafficker. Her neighbors resented what the new fame had done to their lives, and burned her house down. Maria Sabina would die in relative poverty in 1985, and in a strange twist, would become something of a martyr or patron saint of psychedelic healers. Tchotchkes and t-shirts bearing her likeness began popping up all over Mexico. More recently, in November of 2020, her great-grandson petitioned local authorities for custody of her remains, and turned the original site of the Veladas into a shrine and museum in her memory. Things went better for Wasson. In fact, he went on to self-publish books on mycology and mushroom worship in other cultures around the world. Never more than an enthusiastic amateur, most of his theories concerning the Vedic Soma, Hellenic Kikyon, and an ancient global mushroom cult have since been largely discredited. For all the damage to Maria Sabina and Walter de Jimenez that this wave of drug tourism caused, he remained largely unapologetic, saying it was unfortunate but a small price to pay in the pursuit of... knowledge? 
Later it would come out that at least part of his expedition to Mexico had been secretly funded by MK Ultra, making him an unwitting CIA asset in the search for mind control drugs. What can we learn from all of this? Psychedelic science isn't perfect, and trying to mainstream ancient and sacred practices doesn't always work out for everyone. Walter de Jimenez felt the worst effects almost immediately, but it's safe to say that the rest of the world wasn't exactly ready for the massive wave of psychedelic use that followed in the coming decades. With media interest peaking again, and psychedelic tourism to Central and South America very much on the rise in the form of ayahuasca retreats and ibogaine clinics, it feels like that's worth remembering. 